Hello, my name is Diana Rose Mary Tune. It is a pleasure to welcome you to Positive Steps into Social Mobility, Awareness and Empowerment. Whatever you do in life, you are bound to experience social mobility as you move from one set of circumstances to the next. Circumstances with coincidences that enables you to move ahead in your life. For example, having a trade. Having a trade is a social mobility whether it is from the university of life or an academic place of learning first and foremost as with everything it is what you do with the tools and resources that you have that dictates how this aspect of social mobility benefits you. Secondary is how it benefits your family, how it benefits your community, how it benefits your professional development and your work partners. In essence, it all begins with you. You put the effort in and you receive the reward. People like you who have already taken the first and subsequent steps into social mobility gather speed through being able to readily utilize social circumstances to their benefit. You have been at the lower social positions. You survived it. You gained strength of character from it. You are mentally and or physically scarred from the experiences. Now, the only way is up. You are determined to make it in life. You are determined to change your set of circumstances. Why not you? Why not now? You still have the fear. You are still afraid of not being acknowledged with anything special. You are still afraid of being a fraud amongst special people. You are still afraid of not being accepted by people better than you. You still have many fears and these fears hound you as you sleep and during the day. You fight with yourself in your head about how inadequate you are and how no one gives you a chance in life. You are ready for the greatest step forward, the greatest step out of your comfort zone, the greatest step away from your fears. There are many people who were once where you are right now, from all across the world who are looking to help others similar to themselves into social mobility. 
these particular groups of people have this innate need to help others who remind them of themselves and want to get ahead in life from a position of social and professional poverty, negligence, setbacks, hardships, and barriers. Sometimes those that are ahead in social mobility see an aspect of their beloved mother, father, brother, or sister in others such as you and they feel a need to help you because of this remembrance. The other side to that is that there are people who were born into or are deeply ingrained into the abuse of social mobility in a morbid manner due to their established family or social circumstances they will use you like a puppet through your lack of know-how in social mobility and through your good will to others there are many people around the world that have made the steps into social mobility from an impoverished or deficient a lack of in their upbringing and these people from very humble backgrounds have experienced such grotesque pompous people. These types of people are to be avoided at all costs. You do not have your name associated with them. You do not give them the time of day. You do not connect with them on the internet you do not connect with them professionally once you give these terrible people the use of your name your time and your money they will use and abuse you until you cease to be useful to them they will and they do trample on you, stamp on you. You have been warned. You are important. You are content and your content equals currency. Let no one take that away from you especially not complete strangers, never mind the members of your own family or community. Let me impart one aspect of terrible social and professional manners that I encountered as a young lady through a consultant contract about 30 years ago, I was recommended by a previous employer to assist as a consultant at an annual tourism expo for a subscription-based publication. There was a white South African man who had been placed in charge of the whole operation at, at the exhibition stand. The team attending were three people. This man and myself initially, then there was the addition and 
a member of staff from the publication office, an Indian young man who was to support me. Prior to the event, I had made some valuable research and connections to assist with the image and quality of the stand to attract passers by. I had paid for marketing images and made telephone calls on my own mobile. I was assured that any out-of-pocket costs would be reimbursed by the white South African. He was all smiles and friendly and said that he could be trusted. He also kept bragging about his social connections through his family to rich people and members of the aristocracy. On the day of the expo, it soon transpired that I would be doing all the work without any decent rest duration. The other two were nowhere to be seen, and yet they bandied my name to other expo stands that I was working for them. Whilst they drank alcohol all day and ate like lords, using up the budget allocated for the event. Swiftly followed by chatting up as many blonde females as possible. There was no professionalism about them. I was the girl at the stand to them. The agreement was that my consultancy experience and knowledge on expos was deemed invaluable to the proprietors of the publication, to the team. This is why I was recommended and why the publishers acknowledged my worth. A number of things went wrong during the expo days and I voiced my concerns that the two men needed to participate more at the stand instead of wandering around like lords of the manor. They did not like my directness. They did not have a clue when they were lacking in resources, in resources to deal with issues at the stand. Issues that I had brought up during the initial preparation of putting the event together, issues that were ignored by the person in charge. Then there was the arrival of family members to the stand. I was ignored by the family and friends gathering. In fact, even the family and friends looked down upon me. The Indian young man was submissive to the white South African and he felt he had the right to belittle me. This was especially apparent when the mother of the South African visited the expo stand. All three tre treated me with disdain in a public setting. I nevertheless rose above the situation. This aggravated them even more. Whilst they were all idly chatting away, I dealt with the inquiries with acute professionalism, so much so that people ignored the two men and wanted my attention. I was doing business with the professionals. The students wanting the subscriptions and the tradespeople interested in the publications. 
it is fair to state that the people hosting the stands nearby noticed the shocking behaviour of the two men and told me as much, stating that any success was primarily down to me. I can state that I made some great connections which helped people that I knew and most importantly that I wanted to help and in turn this helped me even further. What happened to the other two? The white South African was no longer required for the following year and was looking for a job. He had no self-worth. He was used to spending his family's money to fly between Europe, the USA and South Africa for odd jobs. People like him I had witnessed before and came across later in life. The Indian man did not last long at his job as the company went into bankruptcy. People similar to this I come across fairly often and deal with them appropriately. Big God, there are many people who are truly crude and they are not worth your time and effort. When you attend one of our silver service dining events more will be divulged by our members the sharing of experiences will stand you in good stead i learned from others and you will learn from us we all have been through such offensiveness and come out at the other end triumphant. But for now, this is not solely about those types of people with inflated aspects of grandeur and psychological inadequacies within positive steps into social mobility. There is an insight into such people and their fear of people like you from humble beginnings, looking different, having strange accents, so on and so forth, moving forward and upwards in society through knowing the actions, behaviours and introductions that will open up opportunities for you. Opportunities that you gather at a steady pace. Positive steps into social mobility is about you and the people like you who are walking through the social barriers and becoming prosperous in doing so with like-minded people across the world. In social mobility, there is a strong connection to emotional psychology, to others who are like-minded. This is swiftly followed by how can this new introduction be beneficial to a particular situation? Invariably, the situation, if it is not apparent immediately, becomes apparent in a short space of time. Some people call it a coincidence of circumstances. I will give you an example. This is where an invitation for a guest plus one 
has your name written upon it as the plus one. You become vital as a connection for that new contact that you made at a previous event. Your positive steps enabled and provided to others observing you that you could be a part of something bigger, better and special through a recommendation. At events, people will observe how you are dressed and how you conduct yourself. It is as opposites attract and like attracts like. Sometimes you are numbered with people that you have not chosen to be with and whom you would not normally wish to associate with. This is where you make your mark to show your caliber of character and strength so that you come out of the situation as the victor. Something as simple as frequently imitating and harnessing yourself to others in order to rub off some of their perceived grandeur onto you instantly tags such a person as coarse and licentious, fickle or lecherous in ways that you are already thinking of as you visualize the scenario. Can you imagine seeing a guest who intermittently rubs his penis as he is talking to others in the reception area before luncheon is announced? This is one sign of social inadequacy that is not to be seen as an impressive contact, social or professional. How on earth could you recommend someone like this to act on your behalf? Even if this guest was a chairman of somewhere or another, such a guest with a professional status should know better on how to conduct himself within social etiquette, never mind a business luncheon. Unfortunately, I have come across such men at public events. They were senior executives of some company or another. They varied in nationalities from Pakistan, India, Poland, Sweden, Germany, North Africa, and other Eastern European countries whose names have faded from memory. Not wanting to tar all men with the same brush, I am sure that there are some very decent men from those countries. But these experiences do taint one's view on social interaction at somewhat important social events. There are certain expectations in social mobility and once the line has been crossed it is a matter of proving oneself again and again to ascertain a confidence level and trust from others who may give the benefit of the doubt and forgive and forget. Even if someone does forgive and forget such an unforgettable social episode,
the degree of invitations to events for that person will be slim and the interaction will be negligible. It may be that someone with tact and time would need to take a person with this lack in social skills to one side and delicately explain what they should and should not be doing in, pub in public and in company. How one presents oneself in special or important circumstances is everything. It is crucial. It can dictate how fortunate you become through the connections with others who have the ability to bestow you with situations where you can access opportunities and prosperity. With like-minded people, the opportunities and prosperity gathers growth. Sometimes when you enter into social mobility and receive an invitation to an event, or when you choose to take your first step to a ticket held event, you are nervous as you know very little people at the event, or as more is the case, you know no one at the event. In such situations, you have the ability to come away more confidently with at least one mutually beneficial connection. This through having had the positive steps into social mobility guide you through a situation which you are now able to handle with trust and belief in yourself. Imagine not having that foresight and entering a room full of people and not knowing when to enable a start or excuse yourself from a situation. Your accent or dialect should never be seen as a hindrance to propelling you further in life. In fact, it is an asset. It can act as one of the advantageous attributes about you that makes people gravitate to you. Your accent or your dialect realizes your authenticity when connectors are looking for a specific person who has a particular knowledge or experience from a certain location. That means you. People are looking to connect with you and your accent or dialect is the key to your opportunities. One of the most common aspects that expats and diasporas have is a gravitation towards other individuals that have similar similarities or interests to themselves. For example, sport, fishing, symbolism and mythology, charity work, fitness, art, literature, science, gardening, the weather and nature, languages, magic, sailing, hill walking, mountaineering, anything goes. There are no limits, but there are certain conditions in conversations and behaviours that have to be observed in a social setting. There is one 
extra resource for you from me with reference to the previous video. Get that issue resolved and your questions will have the answers. Sign up for the next video and join me as I explain how to get the answers, what the answers mean and how easily they can be applied at social functions. Plus, there is a little exclusive insight for you in a bonus video. Sign up now to take